it's a pleasure, it, it, it's happiness that I can't actually express. But uh, building this for the last two and a half years, it has been a journey of, of ups and downs. I entered when I was passionate about the problem. Now I'm moving to monetizing the problem, the solution that I've created. But we want this to be a movement that can create uh, more ideas that are going to impact healthcare. It does not matter if we, you know, as a startup, you achieve certain goals. They always talk about startups doing this and raise this much money or do that kind of stuff. That's not really the reason that any of us are kind of here. Um, it's, it's, it's the fact that you actually have the ability to give people something that they really value. Success to me, actually, I think I've already arrived at it. For what we are doing, we are, we are actually trying to build something here, not just trying to make money. We're trying to build something that is beyond the borders of this country. The, the advantage of the digitalization of med, of, of medicine, med, med, medical wallet, maybe, maybe diagnosis, maybe this, they are here to stay. They're absolutely here to stay. And, and I think tech will revolutionize medicine in ways that we never expected. In one year's time, I fully expect to see drones delivering uh, medicine. Cameras rolling and action. Hi, how are you? I did want to say that, I'm sorry, Senegalese jollof is the best. My name is Hilda Sim. Digital Health Access connects health service providers and professionals to patients through a mobile phone. <laughs> Full name is Edward Grandstaff. I'm Dufal. So Redbird um, is a startup. Uh, what we do is uh, we're trying to make healthcare very convenient for people with chronic diseases in Ghana and South Sahara Africa. <laughs> My name is Dr. Prosper Hibisipri. <laughs> My name is Menyo Innocent. I'm a team lead and co-founder at MScan. I'm a medical doctor by profession, but a healthcare entrepreneur by passion. MScan stands for Mobile Scan Solutions Uganda Limited. And at MScan, we are developers of low-cost mobile ultrasound machines. First of all, as Uganda, uh, there is only one doctor to 7,000 patients as we talk. And uh, according to the Ministry of Health, 90 minutes, 55 hours are spent in the hospitals right now. And you can see, right now to seek health services, you have to move to the hospitals, the institutions. If you're a Ghanaian, you probably have grown up in, in a home where at least you have a father, uncle, or relative suffering from one or two chronic diseases. You've had to go, go to the hospital before. And for the chronic disease, the thing that happens is that unlike, I'm sure we've all had malaria, unlike malaria where I walk into the hospital, I get treated and I leave the health system and I leave the space for someone. Anytime someone gets diagnosed with a chronic disease, it means that this is a lifetime of going back to the hospital to keep managing your health. So the more people you get added to the chronic disease list, the more inconvenient the healthcare system becomes. So some of the things that you need as a chronic disease patient are actually just basic things. For example, like let's take a diabetic, for example. If, say Kwame is a diabetic. Um, Kwame would need to see their doctor probably once every three months. Ideally, in between that, you want Kwame to be checking in on their health because unlike malaria where you actually feel sick, you could actually have high blood sugar and be walking around and not know. So the fact that it would take me half a day to go into the hospital to go and check it just makes a lot of people don't do that. So we end up either you die accidentally or it becomes when there's an emergency, we rush you to the hospital and your chances of survival are low. So we realize that providing this service where people can have the convenience of still being able to manage their chronic disease by walking just within five minutes, getting their health checked and still move on with their life was something that was worth um, pursuing. I think that uh, the solutions that have to be delivered for Africa have to be developed by Africa itself, okay? And these are solutions that have taken the context of Africa and they have to be developed with Africa, you know, hand in hand. So 
We did a lot, we did a survey in Mubendi and actually got to know that a mother only can afford 5,000 for an ultrasound. Uh, co compared to when they would have, they need to go to a health center in town and pay 10,000 Uganda shillings as transport, get an ultrasound at, at maybe 20,000 and they still have to go back to, to, to the village, uh, back home. So they end up paid, spending 30,000, yet that is money that they could use for other things at home. So we've worked with mothers, we've had a journey with the mothers. Uh, we understand that they need these solutions to be delivered right where they are. And uh, uh, the model that MSCAN, of course, have a co-sharing model that we think is a model that is going to uh, uh, revolutionize how healthcare is delivered in Africa, whereby you work with the community, provide them with a solution. Uh, for example, for us, we charge them $2 uh, uh, per scan. $1 comes to us, $1 stays with the mother. And uh, the, the $1 after one year is able to actually pay back the, the, the money that we have put in our product. And this will still be owned by the whole center where this machine is. So the model that we're using, one is very African-centered, very sustainable, and we hope that uh, uh, we can spur a, a growth of other social entrepreneurs across, across the world. MScan stands for Mobile Scan Solutions Uganda Limited. We are developers of low-cost mobile ultrasound machines. The machines can work on laptops, tablets, and mobile phones. And with this, we are able to do ultrasound even in a low-resource setting. The idea came about when we were posted up country in the low-resource settings. We saw mothers die due to complications related with pregnancy. And these are complications that we could detect using ultrasound. However, the facilities could not afford ultrasound scans because the machines are very expensive, they are power intense, and they are sophisticated to use. So when we came back from these facilities, the low resource settings, we sat down as a team, a team of four, brainstormed and came up with the idea of MScan to be able to manufacture and develop low portable ultrasound devices for using the low resource settings. By the World Health Organization, a pregnant mother is supposed to get a minimum of three ultrasound scans. But the case in Uganda is these mothers don't actually even get one ultrasound scan. And this is, it has inflicted on two uh, the progress of pregnancy and uh, how it, it comes out. We have uh, scanned over 412 mothers in the last two years with, the, with our probes in, a, in one of the, in, in the medical camps that we've done and we've detected 41 complications. So these are mothers that have been referred early in time for surgical and medical intervention, and we've saved this life. We moved from just an idea to actually an actual product that's able to you know, work on mothers. So that took us a lot of, uh, through the trenches and challenges, and through, as we're going through that, we're growing as people. So we're getting to meet new people, we had we met some barriers that we had to overcome so for me it brings joy that to see that uh, there's a mother out there who's receiving an ultrasound courtesy of mscan and uh, that mother is being referred for care and uh, we are saving their lives so for me it, it is a uh, it's joy after a, a whole uh, two years of, of, of struggle the first prototype was built out of uh, research experimentation and try and error that's how we built our first prototype the first prototype however was able to detect the fetal heart rate it wasn't perfect, but we, uh, we experimented with the piezoelectric crystals. These are crystals that produce ultrasound signals. So we were able to understand how these crystals work and how we can use them to actually generate sound. And that was the very first experiment Epscan did. So with Yuri, we were able to use these crystals and then with a the software, it was able to detect uh, the fetal heart rate. It was a big success for Epscan. We now built version three and version four in a period of still one, one year. One of the things MScan is trying to achieve is how can we utilize on the energy produced in the country. So MScan can connect to solar devices or solar panels and with the solar energy system, we are still able to achieve ultrasound even in the low resource settings where power is a very, very big challenge. As a startup, we don't have much money to blow. So if our, we, we think through our strategy and it's, we are we're in a lean startup methodology. So my worry is if we're going to compete with the likes of, 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 of the big companies and we are, we are going to compete for the same market or, or to, you know, to, to be doing the same strategy to compete against them, it, it worries me a lot in that uh, 
you know how the sharks be. It's, it's never easy. But uh, building this for the last two and a half years, it has been a journey of, of ups and downs. But as a team, we've kept together despite all the different uh, challenges. We've kept together as a team. The leadership is doing very well and everyone does their role and executes according to what they're supposed to do. So it, it's, it's very, very amazing for us as a team. Uh, gender balance is, is a very big issue. And as a team, we have to recognize that we have to be very cognizant on who are actually on board on the team. So the leaders added so much, but most importantly, we are addressing maternal mortality. And this is, these are issues that affect mothers. It would not make sense to be only gentlemen on the team and you are saying, claiming to be addressing issues of mothers. Yeah. So it, it was a very, very good and Actually, the from team. the start, we were, we were very confused that we are solving maternal the issues of women, but we don't understand women. So the woman on the team has, has actually given us a, a glimpse into the feminine world and how the, you know, how, you know, how they all, you know, operate, how, you know, so she's given us and actually interacting with some of these mothers, we've, been, we've had to learn from her and, and it has enabled us to perform quite uh, better uh, at you know, reaching mothers and uh, getting to know their expectations and, and building something for them. Like I, I said, MSCAN are not just traders of uh, portable ultrasound machines, we are also big on social impact. Uh, one of the things we want to do is, the legacy we want to leave is impact mothers. To me, even one mother dying because of complications in pregnancy, it's very, very hurting. And imagine it's your sister, it's your cousin, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very, it's a big shame to see that someone actually loses life while giving life. So to us as a team, that's a core value and that's the legacy we really want to leave. We also want to make money, absolutely. Yes, and uh, one of the biggest things is we want to scale the idea of MSCAN from just Uganda to Kenya, to the rest of the parts of Africa. Health, wellness, sport, beauty, medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. Every week, connect with our experts. You can ask them your questions and get their advice. Join me, Lina Hamoudou, in Washington on Healthy Living, your new health program right here on Voice of America. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America headquarters here in Washington. I am Shaka Sali. Straight Talk Africa, we call it like it is. We discuss issues that reflect the interests of our audience without fear or favor. We are guided by facts, and I look at myself as a servant of nothing but the truth. My name is Hilda Simwe. Digital Health Access connects health service providers and professionals to patients through a mobile phone. Uh, what patients have to do is go on the app, check for any, patient, any doctor they want to talk to, and consult or book an appointment. I actually started it in 2013 uh, because of my mother. My mother was developed a rare disease, started swelling all over the body. So I, we went to see a doctor, but uh, the doctor gave us some painkillers, but the lady was really in pain. The whole night she was groaning. I searched the whole of Google, but I couldn't get anything. So I, it came to me like, what if I had these doctors, as many as possible, on a platform where I could chat with them? 2019, I should be able to have all this information at my fingerprint. I woke up one morning and I quit my job. And I got a developer who I sat with in his house for the next 48 hours until the website was up. <laughs> so that's how I started Digital Health Access. For a unit like mine, which is a specialist unit, it's not a general unit, it's not like people walk in all the time. We want Cornerstone to be seen over the whole country and you're a small unit you can't go everywhere you can't have you don't have that money to advertise across so many and even in our sector in Uganda health is not advertised we can't advertise ourselves then there's this digital health access which comes in that we can link patients to the 
specialists who and that means also it brings in the issue of uh, uh, trust that you, maybe the patient trusts the health access to do all the due diligence on the facility, on the specialist, so that when the patient goes through the health access, he knows I'm going to get value for money, I'm going to really see someone who is a specialist and not a crook and what. So because of that, I really liked the idea. So that's how we ended up uh, teaming with the health access. And people have a chance, they fear hospitals. It's very hard to see a teenager just walking and sometimes they suffer with these diseases and they don't know whom to talk to. This is the time to use the app. Accordingly to our analytics, uh, Google Analytics, actually more of our visitors are between the age of 18 and 28. So, and the, according to the, our analytics still, the most questions are asked about sexual reproduction. So I think we are more helping the youth in this case because they are the ones who can who normally shy out to ask these questions in institutions. So they look at us as the easy solution. I think the most challenge is spending every saving I've ever worked for for the last 30 years on this company. Uh, we put almost everything. I even sold even my car that I had got from my previous work. It gets tougher, but the, the good thing is that Every call from a client makes it worthwhile. Every time you have a hospital registering and someone telling you we have an appointment, it makes it worthwhile. But as a company, success is when I have every small clinic, every small pharmacy, deep village accessing digital health access to anyone, even those that cannot afford a mobile phone. I would love to have a system that connects the whole health system in Africa in one place. And I'm very sure in the next five years, we're going to be having the most interactive health forum. We're going to be having the most visited site. You know, here in Uganda, it's very difficult to get uh, doctors. Huh? And uh, me being a busy, busy person, I have a busy lifestyle. I have to have something that can be able to enable me reach my doctor at any time. So this application has not only saved me going to the hospital, but it has brought the doctor close to me, where I can even have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the doctor. I, I use Digital Health Access app. One for me as as a doctor, I use it to to give medical advice or even prescriptions, and also co conduct co consultations to the patients via online. Doctors are from all over the country, and I'm also from Ghana and uh, India are always available on the app for me. Uh, there's a very good health forum where we can be able to chat uh, with fellow users. It's a more of peer-to-peer -peer education. Uh, I can be able also to order for drugs from any pharmacy that was listed. So it has been a very good uh, experience for me. Uh, the hardest decision I made is to fire my seven salespeople. It was, I, the next day I came back to office and I was all alone. It came back to the same way I started. When I fired them, I didn't want it, but I had to because I couldn't pay them anymore. It was the hardest. Actually, I was even thinking of taking a loan so that I can keep them on the team. but. One great man said a company can never be run on alone. I had to move at least like the next month, three, four months, until the landlord had to lock me out of my own office, where I spent almost 10,000 to brand. So now I'm working on the streets. Like, so I have to meet these people in hotels, I move around, lie to them that uh, we have an issue. but. All in all, this is mitigating it. It has actually made me stronger. Push, push, like I have moved from, like since morning I've moved from, I think like three investors. Um, I've never been more passionate about this business like it is after they have locked me out. Actually, like this lady does not know what she's doing when she was closing me out. Like, I'm going to be the most important person in the next three years and I may even buy this building one day. I know it is not easy. 
but vision never dies. So Redbird um, is a startup. Uh, what we do is that uh, we are trying to make healthcare very convenient for people with chronic diseases in Ghana and South Saharan Africa. If you're a Ghanaian, you've probably grown up in, in a home where at least you have a father, uncle, or relative suffering from one or two chronic diseases. You've had to go, go to the hospital before. This all came up when I met Patrick at an um, impact hub in Accra on a health hackathon. He had this idea of um, making pharmacies do better and making healthcare more convenient. When we actually wanted to pilot this, I think it was in December 2017, so we chose two pharmacies that we wanted to pilot in. So we went in and we, at that point, it was just myself and Patrick, and we were doing the training for the pharmacy stuff. So we ran through all the tests, we ran through all the software, and then um, we said, okay, now you have to test yourselves so that you know how to do it. And right there in, in the middle of NEMA was this employee who had a blood pressure of almost 190, 130, sitting in the training. And we're like, wow, this is a lifesaver, right? Because anything could happen. She could, God forbid, go home and not wake up the next day. And the boss was like, stop the training, get down, take medication, go to the hospital. That was the first point. And we hadn't even rolled out on Redbird. From what we brought out, um, people have shown up to their screening events and they have sugar levels of 25. I mean, fasting blood sugar level of 25, sometimes even higher than what the reader is able to read. And they have no idea that they have elevated sugar. So for that kind of people, I, um, it's, I cannot overstate what, what it is that is changing. Um, if you look at the tech side that we have, um, we see this as being the catalyst for changing health. We want to connect people within the healthcare space. So in short, Redbed is working with um, community pharmacies that you see around you, around you. You walk into the community pharmacies and anyone with a chronic disease, you're able to walk in and have your health status checked. Even um, if you want to just screen, it makes it more convenient instead of spending, say, a day in the hospital. It's around you, um, as of today, in 180 pharmacies. Um, in Accra and Kumasi. So if you see any red bed sign in front of any pharmacy, rest assured, you can go in and quality is assured for your health monitoring. So there's two main parts. There's the technology that we put in the pharmacy itself. So the pharmacy, when you walk into the pharmacy, they immediately have access to our centralized network that lets you see your health records, that you have access to your health records anywhere. And you can see not just one health record, but the trend itself. And so we have a progressive web application, more or less. It just appears like an application on a tablet that we provide the pharmacies for. So all of our pharmacies are computerized from the start, and they have our software running on it uh, as well. And so that allows the, the, any pharmacy that you would go to at Redbird, if you're registered with Redbird, you can authorize that pharmacy to have access to your data. Even if I am somebody who's just, uh, I don't even have a smartphone, which still actually is a decent part of the market, when I get a Redbird test taken at the pharmacy, immediately an SMS with my record has it. So at the very least, I know I can actually take my health record you know, and basically show it to anyone else that, that I'd want to give that to. We have um, people who are like, more confident now. So when they come in with complaints, we can actually run a few tests. And then you know, most people come in thinking they have malaria. And then you check, they don't have malaria. You check maybe probably they have um, low HB. So then we know that this is what's actually wrong, not what they thought was wrong. We have people who also come in, especially those who um, have high cholesterol. They come in testing for their cholesterol like every month to see whether they're improving because they don't really have them cholesterol test strips on the market that they can easily buy. First of all, as a startup, um, right out, out of the gate is, is funding, right? Um, we love this, we love the spot we are in. Um, a lot of this depends on growth, right? So in growth needs capital. 
Um, we have outstanding metrics um, compared to like our colleagues that we've met in the Silicon Valley, uh, Alchemist Accelerator and all that. But being down here, that's a double layer. Like, so what, what you see as success um, down here is not, it's, you, you are being double judged. Like you need to perform way above to sort of like let people feel like they're de-risking. We, we stay up late when we have to stay up late. Um, if we have to forgo holidays, we do those. We pride ourselves in being able to bring together a team that is capable, um, independently capable. So we're able to allow this team to go out there and, and make it. And that is what we pride ourselves in. Like People excited about the work that we do um, because they've bought the vision and people can relate. This is, we are doing good work. Like, um, it's not a call, it's not like a chore, like people just wake up, oh, I have to do this. Like people really are happy doing the work that we do. And the partying culture, um, unfortunately, uh, it's, look, probably could get a bit more of that. <laughs> but um, as a startup now, like we, we kind of work, work comes first, right? Work comes first. Um, we do have fun, we have uh, Friday games that we play, we get winners and we do go out um, a couple of times. The team is lively, like yeah, we, we have a good team. Uh, we don't see this just as, oh, Redbird's just for Ghana. Uh, this is just gonna be a Ghana thing. But the environment is perfect, both because we found a perfect uh, match between the skill sets that we need to build the business. So this includes like basically talented, eager people who really want to solve this problem because they very much recognize that convenient healthcare access is really, really important. And you realize that this is not something that anyone has really solved. Um, but the fact is here, you have the community pharmacies and the networks and the people that want to make this type of healthcare better is here. But then the other part that was combined with it is the skill sets that we have access to. Um, so we were a little bit concerned, like, okay, well, when we develop this, we have to make sure what technologies are we gonna use because we're gonna have to be able to find local skill sets and local talents. But we found that that's not the case at all. I can speak as the CTO, uh, the, the technology ecosystem, and I know that's a phrase that people use a lot, is fantastic here. Um, the skill sets that people have and the access to people who are bright and talented and eager to solve this problem has worked really, really well. And we're happy, like I think we couldn't think of anywhere else to do it at, um, than Ghana.